Hello out there, Martinsville. Welcome to AIWF Ringside Wrestling. I'm your host, lovely and talented Rick Diesel. I have as my guest this week, Sebastian Kane. We're going to go right straight to the phones because that's what we do. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, yeah. Hey, now. You're going to start off on bad, going to ride on the wrong foot this week already, ain't you? Where'd you get them bridges at? You all right? Hey, man, I'll tell you what I've done. Check this out. So we got a lot of calls and cards and letters in the AIWS and all these women up here wanting to see my legs. Well, here they are. <laughs> Look like you've been out pulling around somebody's hen house and dog got at you. Well, now, trust me, if I was up here pulling around the hen house, you know, the, these old men down there, they, ain't, they, they won't come out and shoot at me with a the gun. They'll send the wife out there and say, sick them. So, you know, it's a good possibility. Who's that Sebastian Kane? Is that, he's an ugly-looking juggle. Yep. Yeah, well, he don't claim to be pretty. He just claims to be tough. <laughs> I, that fellow's on that last week to be him. Uh -oh. Let me tell you something about Bone Crusher. This crusher guy over here in the amateurs can't wrestle. He's supposed to be their heavyweight champion. I seen him pull his belt buckle out of that bag the other day. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you, right now, if they have any kind of competition in the ACW, it's only because they have to bring in the big name wrestlers. Would you wrestle him? I'll wrestle him. I'll beat that boy like I own him. All right, we'll see if we can't get a match for you. Hook it up. I ain't scared of nothing. Well, let's say, well, many call, did Crusher say, all the guys in the AIWF, 98 pounds. I weigh 325 pounds. I am 6'6". Six, six. What do you got? Crusher, you're nothing. Say, 6'6", six, six, or uh, 6. <clears throat> That's right, evil. We're <laughs> evil in the AIWF. That's why they don't want to fool with us. Well, we're <laughs> going to fix Bone Crusher up with it. Yeah, we'll get Thanks, a mat a ring up here. All right, we'll hook him up. I'm not cable six. We'll have him up there. Hey, we're, we're, hey, you keep your eye on us, man. It ain't going to be long because we're talking to Charles now. If I nothing else, we'll, if nothing else, we'll bring we'll the bring ring right up here and set it out in the parking lot and beat each other to death out there in the gravel. We don't care. No, well, I ain't get up these, uh, uh, let me say that, uh, what's that, uh, age for elderly, for people, uh. I'll tell you, I'll tell you who would like to do a show for up here in Martinsville. Special Olympics. We're doing some stuff for them down in North Carolina. We'd like to bring it up in here to Virginia, too. Well, they got that uh, Special Olympics uh, type school down at, uh, what is it, uh, outside of Stoneville for handicapped kids. Oh, really? Yeah, out of Stoneville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They got a school down there for handicapped kids. We used to help down there when we was in the CV club and we'd ra raise money for them. You ought to take these people up here that aid uh, senior citizens and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Raise funds for them and the aging people over there. Uh, they, go, they got a place over here where the elder people go stay like needs a babysitter like. Mm -hmm. Talk to them about raising the money for them. All right, I'll tell you what I do. I'll, uh, I'll get the guys here at the station to check into it, find out exactly where the place is, and we'll go talk to them. It's over on the Commonwealth Boulevard, uh, just right past uh, Ferry, uh, Ferry Street. Right across from Hooker Furniture Company's office, main office. All right. Tell them that's where it's at, right across from the office from Hooker Furniture Company. Okay. And it's what uh, they use it for, well, you know, that like a daycare center for elderly people. I might even stop by there today on my way out of Martin. We'll just to see. Uh, I need some that. fundraising because they, uh, they, they they're not uh, funded by government. They're funded by just getting donations. That'd be a good thing. That, okay. And your citizens and different things. They always trying to make money on that. Uh, it's a place over in Fieldale. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. They Stepping Stones. Stepping Stones always trying to have fundraisers. That's for handicapped kids and stuff. Well, I know for a fact that AIWF has sent out about 90 letters in the last uh, two weeks to different organizations in March when they're just waiting for a response. Well, Stepping Stones, they, they're for handicapped kids and grown-ups and stuff. All right. How good Sebastian Kane. Ugly looking joker. Well, thank you for calling in. See you, Weasel Weasel. What? Don't be getting on me like that now. Larry Myers looking thing, you. Hey, now, ain't that, now don't y'all be picking on Larry Myers. That's a scuffling hillbilly. That's a heck of a man. Hello, you're on the air. I didn't fart out of town. <clears throat> what was all that? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. Do what? I didn't fart out of town. 
Have I ever fought out of town? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Where? I have, well, we've wrestled. I've wrestled in South Carolina. I've wrestled in Virginia. West Virginia. West Virginia. I mean, you know, Tennessee. Who you gonna fight next? Who am I gonna fight next? Yep. Don't you got a match tonight? Yeah, well, me and uh, Brian Danzig's tagging up against Chris Wyndham and uh, King Cobra tonight. Oh. That'll be a good one. See you, Diesel Weasel. I like you. I like, hey, what do I think? Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that's the future of professional football. Don't y'all forget it. I like I've it. always said that, and I'll never, I'll never go back on my word about that. Hello, you're on the air. Hey. Hey. I bet you a thousand dollars I can beat y'all. Okay, come on. Well, sit the ring up. We don't need no ring. They spend your parking lot. You know, we ain't going to take time to set the ring up. We want that money now. Hope y'all that. <laughs> well, come on. What are you waiting on, Christmas? That's uh, a long way off, bud. So what's up with y'all want to do? What we gonna do? Yeah. Take your money. <laughs> hey, look, hey, if you can. What? I don't care if you do have it in a can. We'll take the can too. Hey. Hey, look, set the ring up. What we need a ring for? There's plenty of parking lot. Come on. Hey, hey we'll come on. Come on. Are you waiting on Christmas? How much you weigh? 317 pounds. 325 pounds. How much you weigh? Yeah, he weighs about 300. He weighs 325 pounds. I'm dressing out at a, at, a, at a gorgeous, about 215. How much you weigh? I told you. Oh, look. You ain't nothing. So I, I weigh, I, I've got, I got 215 pounds of body weight and another 175 pounds like of beauty. I can knock all that off of you. Make you lose weight the hard way. <laughs> so what you want to do? Is that reason you go sit right there on the couch and watch the rest of the show? I ain't know the couch. I'm standing up. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, okay, okay, you go stand up in the corner and watch us. the rest we of the show. We can't see you. We just figure you're sitting down because... <laughs> So what's up? Oh, that, that's, that's hey, I'm all the way over there. Okay. Next, next, call up. We'll bring it. Weight, weight 300 some pounds. 325. Hey, man, you talking about because all the people weigh 98 pounds where they wrestle. There ain't there. no 98 pound wrestlers. There ain't wrestlers. no 98 pound wrestlers. Someone made the, uh... Only 98 pound wrestlers that Dr. Lee, little, do little, very, get very little love or whatever his name is. Oh, they, yonder, well, somebody hey, made a it? statement that because the AIWF uses has a lightweight like. division, someone made the comment that we have a lot of 98-pound weaklings. But um, we do have guys who weighs in at a 180, 190 pounds, but that's our lightweight division. They be wearing y'all out, don't they? Who? <laughs> <laughs> I must be able to relate to a 180-pound guy. Hey. Hey. How you doing? <laughs> no, Fred, they be wearing y'all out. I'm, nah, I've been in there with several guys who weighs 190, 180, 190 pounds, so I can have a... Hey, who y'all be fighting? With. Huh? Who y'all be fighting? Wrestling. Hey, man, i tell you what. Well, as a matter of fact, just this past Saturday night, he wrestled gorgeous Jimmy Garvin. One of the free birds. Beat him up, didn't it? Yeah, I beat him up. Beat him up pretty no, good. He pinned you, didn't oh, he? no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For he not. <laughs> Tell the truth, man. You're on national television. Now, you, you seen the tape. You're you was there. Did hey, Jimmy Garvin pin me? Hey, Jimmy Garvin did not pin him. Y'all got the tape of it? Dean Puckett. I see you over in the corner. Jimmy Garvin did not pin him. As a matter of fact, next week on the on our other show, the, the Power Zone, yeah. you will have some highlights of that match. You give him a rematch. Yeah, anytime. Whenever he needs an abuse, come on. Can I use and abuse you? You ain't use and abuse me. <laughs> can I? I think I can. Well, come on. Parking lot's right up here. Okay. You want me to send you a taxi? No, yeah, send me a taxi. Okay. Next, <laughs> next call. Hey, <laughs> man, we got to go on some more calls. The line's getting filled up. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, Rick Diesel. That's the scuffling hillbilly right there. I heard you there, man. Hey, they hey, hey, fellas here trying to run me down, or you know you ain't gonna let them do me that way. I won't let them run you down, man, because you 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 gonna throw them hoedowns for us, and we're That's gonna have right. a big pig. I'm pig calling in. you one. I'm calling you in one. We're having one Saturday, starting at four o'clock, next Saturday, right here at my house. And you know I was telling you about that, and I wanted to get you out here. Well, I'll see what I can do about getting out there, man. We're Saturday we're, at 4 o'clock. Now, look here. We're going to have all kinds of eating. We're going to have women, law, have mercy, and we're going to have live music. 
Alright, that's what you want. Hey, ain't gonna be no disc jockey. We're gonna have the live stuff. Well, we don't need no disc jockey. That's you gonna have music. If it ain't live, it ain't worth listening it's to. The proof's in the pudding. That's it. And we're gonna have pork chops. We're gonna get them our pigs and try to uh, roast them. Alright. No, we're, they're gonna be finger licking good. It'll be kind of melting your mouth, not in your hands. That's what you want. We like Eminem. Uh-huh. <laughs> we're really gonna get down if we can get you out here. Alright. We'll see what we can do about getting out there. I know we're wrestling next weekend down in North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Well, you can make it back. You can make it back here by 4 o'clock. Well, I'll see what I can do. Look here. I've got a flatbed of truck load of women that's wanting to meet me and you. All right. They know we're gorgeous. Uh-huh. It ain't mine your fault. We can't help it. Mother Nature just throwed that on us. I mean, when it comes up on you, you just can't help it. Yeah, that's right. Now, you, you know, if you got that sex appeal, that's and, it. Uh, you know, it, it runs in the family. It runs in my family a lot anyhow. Well, I, I, uh, uh, maids and, and housekeepers run in my family, but we catch them anyhow. Oh, <laughs> you're that. Oh, you're going down now, ain't you? <laughs> hey, we, we'll get it wound out here by 4 o'clock Saturday evening. All righty. We're going to have a grill a going and meat a flying everywhere. That's what you want. Uh, no, it's hard to tell what fly will take place. All righty. Larry will be here live at Picking and Grinning with his band, and we're going to have another band live. And we're just going to have a good old hillbilly foot stomping hoedown. That's what you want right there. We'll see. I'll see if I can't get over to it. I hate I missed the last one, but I'll see if I can't make it. You're missing a good thing. Yeah, yeah we, I played last night till about 12 o'clock down in Axton, and the building was packed. And you talk about a time we had it. I bet y'all did. Hey, you missing it. You're going to have to get, get, uh, get busy there. And uh, let me step in there and help you get some of this wrestling off your back. All right, well, I'll see what I can do, man. Guys, you know, they just want to pick around on you and all that good stuff. And hey, people don't bother I'll me. have to do the foot stomp on them. I can't help it, you know, and try to get off from you and straighten them out. All right, I appreciate that. Get one of these women and give them my pocketbook slap. There you go. Uh, just smack them with their purse. <laughs> you put a brick in and hit them upside the head with it. Well, I'm gone, Rick. Now, I'm going to be looking for you now. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye. That's the scuffling here. I like him. Yeah, I like right. him. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. Yeah. This is the Iceman. I heard you've been talking some junk about some more wrestlers. And that guy beside you, been talking about he beating Jimmy Garvin. Mm-hmm. I want to see it before I can believe that. Well, like I said, they're gonna, we're going to have some highlights. Yeah. At least part of the highlights of the, of the tape next week. See, I've been missing these last few weeks, and I know all these people have been wanting to hear me call in and everything. Well, here you are. Yeah. You're live on the air. I heard you've been talking some junk about me in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and? You have? Well, I mean, you know, you called in one time talking about you so bad you'd ice tray and stuff like that, ice cube, something, I don't know what it was, or, or iced over, and Keep yeah, I, I come right on back just like I always do, because that's the type of man I am. Uh, um. Yeah, you ain't nothing along with these other two backlands. Collinsville poet, the Dynamo from Ohio, and that punk beside you, and this other guy they call the Crippler, whoever he is. I don't know, it's some guy in a wheelchair. None of you ain't nothing but a bunch of punks. Yeah. It's the reason you're home and we're getting paid. Yeah, that's why we're on TV and you're on the phone, because we ain't nothing and, you know, we never will be nothing. I'll come up there and show you who the man is. Why, you got one with you? They call me the Ice Man. Oh, okay. I thought maybe you might have some, had one over visiting. Wait a minute. If he's the Iceman, ain't he part of the, the Fantastic Four or X-Men or something? No, nah, it's, you know, he's, he calls himself Iceman. He ain't called in the last few weeks because he had that heat wave. Ah, <laughs> meltdown. Yeah, he couldn't get out of the refrigerator. I, I ain't been here lately. No, okay. He's been laying in the freezer. Yeah. Recuperating. Chilling out. Chilling. Iceman chilling. Brr. I'll come up there and put both of y'all in the deep freeze. It will be over. The road is open. Ain't well, no it is kind of humid today, so, you know, a little cool air wouldn't hurt nothing. So we'll see you. We'll see you when you get here. All right. All right. And we're moving right along. Hello, you're on the air. This is the Hulk stuff. Oh, another <laughs> identity crisis coming in. Hey, we got some guests going to be coming on here in a little bit. Come down from Canada. I told them about all these people down here having the identity crisis. I'm back from my successful match at Slambury. Okay. I was partying all night when I get back in there. Ain't old enough to party. Hogan's voice changes. Yeah. All that partying doesn't <laughs> mess up your voice. You sound like a 12-year-old again. You, you didn't have your vitamins, did you? No. 
Okay. Didn't say your prayers, did you? Yep. Yeah. Now you should pray for a deeper voice. No doubt. I'm gonna call my and hair. Hotline. If you wanna call my hotline in the dollar ninety nine, I'll tell you all the about 99 how 99. I did it. Well, you think he's lost in the 50s singing again? No, nah, 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 nah. but it's, it's, you know, I said it's that identity crisis yeah. thing going on. But we let him do it because we're an equal oh, opportunity, phone receivable, call in show. I'm glad you said that. You gonna call my hotline, see? I'll tell you all about how I parted and how I wanted everything. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, dokie. Okay. All righty. We're gonna charge it to Randall Piles. Put on his phone bill. Hello, you're on the air. Who's the man in the yellow shirt? That's Rick Diesel. Damn, you got a big nose. You ain't kidding, but I'm going to tell you what. There's a reason for this big nose, and if this wasn't family TV, I'd tell you what it was. Hey, Hello, man. you're on the air. You got to hang another line up, though. There you go. That's my Hello, you're on the air. Hey, man. Hey. hey he, that dude called up at the ice, man. He set both of y'all up. Y'all scared, man. Right. Oh, yeah, we're shaking. Feared. <laughs> It ain't because we're scared, it's because, you know, every time he calls in, the, the cool air coming through the phones, the ice man, it no. makes us tremble. <laughs> I was on here, I was on here with a with a 318 pound psycho last week and I wasn't scared. Why would I be scared of somebody who's calling in on the phone pretending to be somebody he's really not? Well, because he, he can't figure out who he really is to begin with. Hey? They come up right kick both of y'all's tail. All right. Okay, I hope he brings 12 feet with him. they will have to. Might want to bring a step buddy, hope too. Hope he's an octopus who's got a shoe on every leg. He's going to take it all to kick his tail. <laughs> all right. All right. Back. Hello, you're on there. Hey, how you doing? I'm hanging in there, man. Uh, did John Stud die a couple months ago? Yes, he did from Hodgkin's disease. Okay, um, we've got one more question for you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, you had a, a Wyndham boy on. Uh-huh. Uh, was that one of Barry Wyndham's brothers? Well, he don't, he is from Sweetwater. He don't uh, really put no claim to being kin to the Wyndham's. I mean, you know, there's a lot of them down there. Yeah, he so, looked a whole lot like Barry Wyndham. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, he, he, him and his family moved from there when he was young, but he's always claimed that to be his home. Uh -huh. So, you know, he never really got to know all the people that he was kin to down there. I don't know, some kind of family dispute or something like that. I don't know what happened. Yeah, they used to have a big feud between uh, um, Jack Mulligan and uh, John Studd. They, they fought from the time they were in elementary school to the time they went through high school. They said every time they got together, it was one big fist fight, one right after another. Well, I tell you, that's how a lot of uh, feuds in wrestling get started. I mean, you know, kids are... Opposite schools, in, a, in the same town, they start out wrestling amateur, they go through college, and then they're both, both going professional. A lot of good feuds have started that way. Do you know Jack Boyd? Uh, no, I sure don't, not personally. Okay, he uh, used to be one of the uh, amazing bolos. Yeah. The, the old tag team from back in the 50s and 60s. They've been called, I've had some calls in about him. He is one more um, big man. You know, he's probably six, eight, six, nine. He's, he, I guess he's close to 70 years old now. I th I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's passed away. Really? Yeah, I think someone called in. If it's the same one, I believe someone called in a couple weeks ago and told me that he had passed away. Well, that was a shame because, you know, he he had uh, started out, had the, uh, uh, he used to have the thing here, what was that, ECWA? Mm -hmm. And they uh, used to get down here in the uh, shopping center uh, down uh, where the Holiday Shop Center is. Not Holiday Shop Center, but... Cloverly Shopping Center, and they had a bunch at the Bassett Moose Lodge and things like that, and he was trying to get that going. And they had a few from this area, the, um, Jimmy Adams, um, the uh, promoter now for um, the, the boxers from up at Bassett. Mm -hmm. He had a, a few that was wrestling, and a uh, um, big fellow that I used to go to high school with, he called himself the Crusher, and they used to have a right good turnout, you know, uh, some of these fellows are still around, if they're listening, they get them to call in and get you to know a little bit more about it there, because uh, this was probably 15, 20 years ago when they were trying to get this going, and Jack was one of the people that was trying to get it going, but he used to be professional wrestler, they were the amazing bolos, and they were awesome, That's great. dirty too.
Hey, man, I've got to take commercial. I hate to cut right. you off, but you, buddy. I appreciate you calling in. Right. Bye. Hey, we'll be right back after this. We're back, Dad. Yeah, they did for Inside Wrestling. I've got a, brought another guest on the show. This, this man is from Canada. How you doing? Pretty good yourself. I'm going to have him introduce, a little, introduce yourself to you, tell you a little bit about himself, and uh, that way you can get to know him, know who he is, what he's about. He's going to tell you a little bit about himself, so you go ahead and do that now. Well, my name is Sassy Steve Stryker, and I'm yet another legacy of what Canadian wrestling's all about. There's Crippler Chris Benoit, the Rougeos, Rick Martel, Dino Bravo, and then there's Sassy Steve Stryker coming down from Canada to show all you Americans what wrestling's all about. All right, and uh, he's, he's held the River City Wrestling television, television title. title. He told me that earlier. Now this right here, now, now I don't know a lot of you people out there think, oh, well, he comes from down the street. No, this guy is really from Canada. So any of you people out there who wants to try to call in and say, oh, he ain't really from Canada. Oh, yes, he is. Well, how, you, how you doing, Mr. Stryker? Hey, you hey, know, I got to respect a man who kicks the crap out of a free bird. Ain't nothing like it, brother. Ain't nothing like ain't it. Nothing like it. Hello, you're on the air. What do you say? Where you going? Ah. That I'm boy sorry. is out there just come out and just full of holler. You see how white he is? That's these lights in here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's, what's wrong with my sunny. tan? What's wrong with my tan? Tan. Look at this tan. Look at this beautiful tan. That's Canadian this tan. This is a golden <laughs> tan, my white. friend. This is beautiful tan. Look at this. Got enough hair on his chest, ain't Oh, you're just jealous that you can't get a tan hey, like the sassy him? one. What? In that scuffle, he'll be there. Show his picture that. Show it, he'll be there. Oh, they'll put it up there. Show his scuffle, he'll be there. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes. Here it comes. The scuffling hillbilly. There he is. You see his ears? Yeah. He takes his ears and, he, and, you know, like that elephant, and flaps his ears and he starts make, make him light on his feet. <laughs> you know how that, that he flaps his ears, that makes him light on his feet, and they get around that ring real fast. Yeah, he float like a butterfly. And flash like a bee, or sting like a... How's that? Sting like an elephant. And stink like an elephant. No, sting. Yeah, I know he stinks like an elephant. I can't... No, now. Why well, you got to bring sting up? Please. Now, I did not say nothing about stinking. All right, yeah. that was this guy. But that's got some hillbilly, and you weasel can whoop, whoop eye out of hot, hot eye out of a bag. Well, I'll tell you what, y'all got plenty of bags up here full of hot air. I've seen them walking up down the street. From West Virginia, can't do nothing but work in a coal mine. They've been over in the back, they're humpback. Well, I don't know about that. I, don't, I try not to go up in West Virginia too often. I get Canadian people all in there. What? Benzois, Benzois. The dudes. What, what, what? What's, what's wrong with Canada, man? It's the talent. It's the talent. Like you got down to these Americans. Us Canadians come down here and we give the boots to these Americans who think they're something. If it wasn't people like Chris Benoit and soon to be the sassy one of international fame. What are you laughing about? What? You hang up on him. Goodbye. The Canadian man serves his point. He chases the American away. You guys are all scared of me, Canadian. You think I'm going to jump out of my TV? <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Rick Diesel, how you doing? Hang in there, man. Wide up. Uh, I heard y'all talking about my uncle, Jack Boy. Yeah. Okay, the, now, this guy a while ago, he didn't know that he'd passed away. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'd like to be glad they brought some new talent in from Canada, and uh, I don't pay no attention to what these people say down here. They all off in the head. Yeah, see, there's some good, honest Americans. They respect the talent from Canada. I like that. Now, now this gentleman here, when the guys called in a while ago asking about the bolos, Bolo. one of them was this guy's uncle. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, really? That was from back in the wow. 50s and 60s. This guy's a legacy, so I show him a lot of respect. A lot of respect indeed, yes. Uh, we are wrestling at tonight. A uh, place called King, North Carolina. King, North Carolina. Yes, just a few miles uh, north of Winston-Salem. Did your buddy beside you over at back, did they win the tag team title? Or? No. No, Dixie Dynamite won him on a fluke because of Smiling Diamond Dave. Oh, goodness gracious. Off, man. You see how Monkey Boy looks. Smiling Diamond Dave anyway, turned so. his back on the Tennessee Violence Authority. And then again in Westfield, we had a chance to get the titles again. And on the whole, if Dixie Dynamite didn't pay off, Robot Rex and Diamond Dave. Well, I, I've been telling Rick Diesel, I'm going to come to IWF, and you need a partner, I'll be there for you. Well, brother, come on now. All right, y'all take care and have a good time. See Thanks you, a lot, man. Bye. Yep.
Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Rick. Yeah. How much money y'all make uh, uh, wrestling a night? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good, man. I mean, you know, we can't argue. We, we don't complain with it. I mean, you know, you, you see, you see, this man eats well. This man, this man travels. He come down from Canada. I mean, so, how much money do you make, Rick? Do I make? Yeah. Ballpark. Ballpark? Yeah. I can't tell you. I won't tell you. For the simple reason is because I have a hard enough time with people bugging me anyhow, and if they know how much money I make, I'm I just so afraid they'll make it worse. You know, you see what people like uh, Richard Gere and, and uh, Bruce Willis and all them have to go through. Well, uh, just saying, need to buy yourself some new shoes. Who? You. Ain't nothing wrong with these shoes. Put them up there. What, what kind of are they? Those are fine shoes. Those are fine looking shoes. What's the name of them? What's the name of them? Yeah. They're called, uh, Franklin's. Franklin's? Mm hmm. Oh. I don't go for this Nike and this, uh, Air Jordan and stuff <laughs> like that. So I, I got my right. own don't style. Go. No offense, this man's wearing Nikes. So no offense to him. It's just, I mean, you know. Well, don't buy yourself some new shoes, buy you two girlfriends something. I'm not the intimidated. <laughs> I don't have to rent my women. <laughs> no, the two guys sitting beside you, buy them something. They got their own money. They can have anything they want. Like I say, this man come down from Canada. Now, you know you got to have what, what, money to be what, able to travel like that. What, man what, travels everywhere. What part from Canada? What part of Canada? From Manitoba. It's about 150 miles north of uh, Grand Forks, North Dakota. Oh, all right. So we're from way up in the wow. Great White North. That's a ride. That's a ride. It took us about 30 hours to get to Knoxville, and uh, the traveling's uh, quite extensive indeed. No doubt. Beautiful country, though. Oh, all right. Thanks for calling in. Have a nice day. Hello, you're on the air. Hi, Rick. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? They need to lay off of my daddy. Scuffing Hillbilly's my daddy. And oh, how you doing? That's, that's, that's one of the little, little scufflers right there. Yep. And uh, Larry don't walk with a hump on his back where he worked in the coal mine, so they need to lay off of him. Well, I take up for him every time they call in and start, start bad mouthing him. Yeah. I'm out there on his side every time. Cause they need to leave him alone. He ain't be. That guy don't know Larry. If he did, he pr he probably changed his little tune. Yeah, cause I I mean I've never got to meet Larry personally, but just talked to him on the phone. You know, me and, me and him, I like him. Me and his good friends, man. Uh, he's crazy now, let me tell you. He, he had some he had some good parties out here in this yard. I bet so. They have a good time out here. I just hope so much that I can get to attend one just as soon as possible, but you know I stay on the road so much, you know, on Saturday nights. Uh-huh. That uh it's really hard for me to make them. Well, you can come after you leave cable six. There'll still be some food. Really? There'll be food when you get here. Oh, I might just try that then. I'm glad you're down from Canada. Canada's hey. a beautiful state. Hey, can I have some food too? Yeah, you're right. welcome to come right. too. There you have it. Okay. All of you are welcome to come and have a good time. We're going to have live music. Thank you. And uh, one of my friends want to meet you real bad, Rick. Really? Yeah. She's a pretty blonde. Oh, Ooh. that's you, buddy. Oh, now. That's you. Wait just yeah. for now. I'm telling you what. She's real pretty. She don't weigh but about 103 pounds, 105. <laughs> Hold me back. It's over. I'm going to have to go through his phone line. <laughs> easy now, dude. Easy, dude. He watches easy. you every Saturday. Well, you tell her I said, hey. I will. She's probably watching you now. You tell her, hey. I said, hey. <laughs> All right, I'll tell her. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Ooh, All right. No, no, no doubt. Hello, you're on the air with Rick Diesel, Sebastian Kane, and Sassy Steve Stryker. Okay, there, uh, Diesel. How you been doing? Hanging in there, man. I tell you, you better watch these women around here. Some of them like to pull the shoes off every now and then. So, uh, you know how that goes. Hope it ain't like that monkey board. Well, I mean, I, I've seen some women with some mighty ugly feet. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. <laughs> mighty ugly feet. I've seen women got toes they can set on a limb. Just see them up in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, Jack, Jack Boyd. The F you called me the other day, you know, that number I gave you? Yeah, okay. And uh, it, it, I told him, come on by here and get that. He could have it for nothing, but I see it's still right where I told him it was. Well, hey, I mean, you know, it's, you know how, how it is. People get busy, 
Yeah. So, well, he went ahead. He called me. He said he was coming after, but I, I haven't saw it. Well, he's watching the show because he called in a little while ago, so he knows you're still interested. So maybe he'll he'll call you again and y'all can work something out. Yeah. Well, he 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 knows where I live, at, and I told him he could have it. I wouldn't charge him nothing for it. He might order to hurry up before somebody comes by and grabs it now. Okay. All right, Diesel. Y'all take care. All right. Thanks for calling in, bro. Right. Hello, you're on there. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hanging in there, man. Hey, hey what a dude from in a black t-shirt. Sassy Steve Stryker, come down from Canada. You from Canada? Canada. From Canada. Are River, you River City not? Wrestling Organization. Huh? He wrestles for the River City River City Wrestling. He's a former River City Wrestling TV champion. Yeah. He can't fight up, you that big tail. Now how do you know he can't fight? He's from Canada now. You had to grow some pretty big guys up in Canada. You got lumberjacks. Big person, that's what they are. Now let me tell you something about Canada. If you can go hey, seven hey. months. Hey, listen up, pal. If you hey, can go no. hey, if you hey, can go no. seven months of the year. Hey, man, I want your tail. They'll, they'll hey, do that. You just hey. gotta keep on talking. You know, I, you know, these Americans, that's what that's what I mean coming down from They're Canada. Rude. They, you know, we deserve respect. I've come from way up in the great white north of Canada in the province of Manitoba, in the middle of Canada, and I come down here to show you guys class, as per these two gentlemen here, and then all of a sudden... Well, I get, oh, I get you coming all the way down there, but you still can't wrestle. Oh, yeah. Can't wrestle? Well, let me tell you something. You tell, you know, who's your favorite wrestler? How about that? Who's your favorite wrestler? Uh, hold on. Uh. Rick Flair, yo. Rick Flair. Well, that's a man who's a class act. I, I myself would probably say uh, I could not beat him at this time due to my experience, but I'll tell you, any promoter in this area, okay, I came down to Canada to wrestle people in the States. Now, any promoter, any time, any place, you bring on your champion, you throw anyone at me, I'll give them a run for their money. No problems at all. It's the Canadian way. I get you right there, though. <laughs> I tell you what, y'all keep y'all keep watching now. I love that nigga for Chattel. Y'all keep watching now, I bet, yeah, because I mean, when they, even when these guys go back to Canada, we're gonna see if we can't get some videotape of their matches down here and put on our TV shows. Hey, okay? supposed to be fighting night. Who? You do it in the back. That's none of your business. Whoever it is, I'm sure he'll take care of the pro the situation. Bottom line. Man, you push, I'll come up there and fuck you up. All right, now see, there you go. Now I got to cut you off because you run your mouth and now I've got to get up on my soapbox and talk about how stupid you people are again. Now, y'all call in and y'all start telling me, well, Rick, you don't need to throw off on us because we're good people. We don't always do that. And then some idiot calls in and pulls something like this, which just proves that I'm usually right when I talk about the, the immature, low, low intelligence, and dirt farmers that y'all are. I know there's some of you out there who are intelligent and can call in and have a decent conversation with me, but when idiots like this call in, it don't do nothing but bring the level of intelligence that people think of y'all down another notch. So why don't y'all do something about these people, hunt them down, slap them around, throw them out in the road, and run over them two or three times in the car, and keep them off my telephone. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I want to know um, whose idea it was to use them like zombies, theme songs. Oh, y'all's commercials and stuff. Hey, hey let me tell you something. Yeah. White zombie rules. That's why we use them. I know, man. I, I'm going to see them Monday in Winston-Salem. Are y'all oh. going to be there? Oh, I envy you. We're going to try to be there. I'm going to try my best to be there. Have y'all got the new album? Yeah, I've got it. I got it like two weeks after was out. I waited for it to go on sale. Well, I didn't get it for about two weeks ago myself. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, take it easy. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Uh-huh. Now, the first white zombie album I don't have... But I will get that very soon. Hello, you're on there. Hello. Um, who do y'all wrestle? Whoever. So we wrestle whoever the promoter puts us in the ring with. Uh, where y'all play at? Well, we wrestle, uh, well, like I said, we're on TV up here with another hour later on today. I don't think they're going to show it right at 12 today. I think they're going to switch the time for today. I don't know if it'll be a permanent time slot. They're still trying to you know, get us our permanent time slot. But we will be on the air today with another show. We wrestle all over the state of North Carolina. We're moving into Virginia, so we're, we stay pretty busy. Do y'all be on TV? Yeah, right here on Cable 6 every Saturday. Uh, um, what time? Well, we got the talk show every Saturday from 11 to 12, 
And uh, we have another show that shows matches. Normally it comes on at 12, but I think it's going to be on a little later in the day today. I don't know exactly what time yet. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Hello, you're on the air. Doing a great job, Rick. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Ain't nobody down here dirt farmers either. Well, I, 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 like I said, I know there's some people out there who are intelligent and can call in and have an intelligent conversation with me. The dirt farmers and the low lives are the one that calls in and talks like that one did a while ago. And I'm sure y'all probably feel the same way. That's right. Okay. Hello, you're on the air. You bunch of rednecks. Now there you go. How see? Did he get red neck? I wow. don't know. You can't even see my neck because I got hair. Look at mine. His, red, his yeah. neck is not Look real. Look at mine. He's got a Canadian tan. That's got. That's tan right. Tan. Canadian. That's right. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, I'm calling. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hey. How y'all doing? Hanging in there, man. Yeah, you're right though, man. A whole lot of people, you know, they call in with. You know, stupid comments, you know, stupid comments or whatever. Yeah. He listen or whatever, you know. And, you know. Turn your TV down just a hair. There you go. All right. Um, where is uh, Lex Luger wrestling at now? WWF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Him and him. British Bulldogs tag teaming up there at the present time. Have you ever wrestled him? No, I haven't, but a lot of people down here with wants me to. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if the WWF or the AIWF could ever set the match up, I, yeah, I would. Yeah. But I've never had the privilege. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I wish people call in. I mean, if they talk or talk and just talk with a decent, decent, you know, yeah. conversation and just a lot of abusive language or whatever, you know. I, I'm sure that a, that a lot of the, the decent people in Marks will wish that these people would stay off the line because, I mean, the, the remarks I make towards certain people in Martinsville is not to everyone. It's not to decent people like yourself who, who can call in and, and talk with decent language and have a decent conversation. When I say something bad about somebody, it's about these, these idiots that calls in and uses bad language that just because we're on live TV and they think that makes them look big, probably just like they all sit out uh, in an alley somewhere smoking cigarettes, eating stuff out of the dumpster, and they think that makes them look big, but it don't. It, it brings down the morale of everyone in the city, and it saddens me a lot. All right. All right. I see y'all then. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, we're going to take commercial. When we come back, we're going to have another Canadian wrestler right here on stage. of Sassy Steve Stryker in action in Canada. So, hey, he's good, the man is good. I've got another guest on here, okay? This is Brother Midnight. Tell him a little bit about yourself. All right, my friends, this is Brother Midnight talking at you on the AIWF. Is that right, my friend? Right out of Collinsville, if you understand what I'm saying. I want to tell you a bit about Brother Midnight. I started wrestling in 1989. I was born in the country of Canada where I met my good friend, the Sassy Man. And that's right, over the last five years of my life, I've been on crusade spreading the good word about Brother Midnight, bringing the good word to people currently on crusade through Tennessee and the Carolinas and the Virginias, if you understand me. Which brings me to Collinsville right now, my good friend Rick Diesel. It's a pleasure being here, if you understand what I'm saying, my friend. I do. I like it. We're privileged to have you on the air with us. I thank you, sir. Hello, talk to me. You say you're privileged to have me on the air? No, 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 it's Brother Midnight. Are you talking bad about me talk, call me a uh, dirt bomb and all that? No, not, if you're one of the ones that, that calls in and uses foul language on the air, then I am. He called you foul language. All I saw you was uh, uh, weasel diesel. No, oh, well then, I, I mean, I can well, deal with that. You and that's careful, and he'll be, I'm going to have to take both of y'all out behind the barn. Now, now, I can handle the criticism as long as you don't use no profanity, okay? You Dirt know, the scuffling, he'll be, you know, Popeye the Sailor Man. Uh-huh. 
Well, I passed by his house while I go down there, and he had a pair of beer bow holes and a corn cob pipe in his mouth. A short, uh, the beer bow hole was cut off up above his knees. Mm -hmm. It looked like a bow-legged hillbilly. Uh, well, that's a scuffling hillbilly. No, the bow-legged hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'll let you and him argue about that. You look at him. You look at picture of him. Don't he look like he's the Popeye the Sailor Man? And tell him to blow his mouth up like Popeye does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that old, old scuffling hillbilly is something else. But that fellow right there reminds me of Dr. Love on, on you right right there. Doc, you mean Brother Love from the WWF? Brother Love, way it talks. Well, this is Brother Midnight. It'll sound like Brother Love. Well... Well, you know, my friend, I'm not really, I'm not really familiar with Brother Love, if you understand me. Brother Midnight is here, tell you if you understand him. what I'm saying. Tell, it, tell, tell him about that funny man, Mr. Love. Well, Brother, Brother Love was in the WWF. He's a funny man. He was, he, he, done, he was a televangelist, kind of like, such as yourself. I'm he, sure he's a fine man. He had a, he had a pretty long stay, so to speak, in the WWF. He had he done some managing. He had a, his own little talk show up there. So yeah, you're right. They do kind of have similarities. Yeah, but you said he was funny. But no, I never said Brother Love was funny. We've never even mentioned Brother Love on this show until you mentioned him today. He was on mentioned about last week when he was on Cable Five. But that's the one. Oh, you're talking about Doctor Lee Love. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a totally different man altogether. You're talking about Doctor Lee Love. They won't talk about people in the AIWF weighing 98 pounds. This man is no bigger than an extension cord. Come on. <laughs> no, I ain't. You in a scuffle in here, baby? All right, bro. See ya. All right. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, hello. I was just calling to let you know that I agree with you. When these people call in and say all these things, it really shows how dumb they are. I yes, agree it with does. you. Yeah, it does, and, and it saddens me because it gives people a bad impression of, the, of your city in general. Mm -hmm. and, and that's sad because, I mean, Steve Stryker comes down from Canada. Brother Midnight comes in, bringing his crusade through the AIWF, and, and this is what they have to see when they come to, to Collinsville and Martinville, Henry County area. I, I mean, it's not, it didn't color. leave a very good impression with these gentlemen. You know, I, I gotta really agree with this young lady here. Very, very intelligent human being, if you understand me, because there are good people out there, but the bad people that show themselves make people think that the whole, the whole society is bad. And that's why Brother Midnight is here, because I'm trying to spread the good word. I'm trying to spread goodness around, and I want more of the goodness to come out of society, if you understand me. I like that. I like that. It just shows the true colors when they call in and do these crazy things and say things. You're exactly right. It does. All right. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. His so lights get hot. I know they do. I yeah, won't they, apologize. They got on, uh, hot I apologize. That's a hot dollar silk handkerchief. I just want y'all to know. High roller, baby. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, I'm, I'm calling to ask uh, Brother Midnight a question. Speak yeah. to me. And his partner on the uh, on the other side. I was wondering, uh, how much y'all make? I mean, what do y'all make by y'all? What y'all do? Well, you know, I think we covered something similar to this earlier on. Uh, you, I don't know if you're a man who pays much attention. But it, it is commonplace not to discuss finances because as my good friend Rick Beasley, my friend, he was talking about he doesn't like to be harassed by the general public when he knows the kind of money we make. And men like, like professional actors, I believe you mentioned, uh, Richard Gere and Bruce Willis, they get, they get harassed by the general public and that's something we don't really want because we've got enough stress as it is. Myself and my friend Sasha Steven Rick Diesel, we're all very highly stressed in a highly stressful profession and we don't really need added stress, although I appreciate your curiosity. But uh, the way I see it is, um, you know, you're talking about the professional actors and stuff, but um, I see it like, yes, y'all are actors, not professional though. And why do you say that? Well, the way y'all, you know, uh, y'all, all that hoax wrestling and stuff, you know, no, ain't no, real. No, 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 no. I disapprove of that comment, my friend. I truly disapprove of that comment. Go for it. I've been in professional wrestling for three years. Professional? Professional yes. wrestling. That's right. Professional wrestling. Can you spell that? P-R-O-F-E-S-S-I-O-N-A-L. Surprise. Professional, pal. Very good. Ow. Now listen up. Shoulder surgery, three knee surgeries, wrestling. 
Let me tell you something I wrestling doubt it. is. I wrestled for Laurel Park High School. Let me tell you something. And that that's wrestling. I mean, you know, we get out there and work our tails off. Y'all got there and make y'all little little mince meat money and stuff, you know. Y'all got there, y'all just Well listen to me, listen to me. This is Brother Midnight talking out to you. You know, I have a very big amount of respect for the amateur wrestlers out there, you understand me? Because a lot of the professional is based in the amateur roots, if you will. You see, so I don't, I would never ever come out and talk bad about an amateur man. And for you to come out and talk bad about the pro ranks, you know, I, I really hate to say it, my friend, but you really come across as rather ignorant. You know, you know, my, 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 um, my old man, he, he wrestled all the time, but see, he, he done his for a charity and stuff, you know, and, you know, every, every time I see this AIWF on TV, you know, all of me and my family, you know, we sit there and just laugh at because we sit there and see all the little fake maneuvers and all y'all sitting there doing, you know. Well, see, have you ever been in a wrestling ring, in an actual match? No, but I kicked a few tails in my life. Case in point, right there. Uh, exactly. Case closed. If you've never done it, don't knock it because you don't know what you're talking about. I wouldn't mind getting a ring on one of these clowns, though. Hey, or buddy, I'll trap you in a half Nelson just like that and down you'll Nelson. stay. Nelson. Now what you talking about about a half Nelson? Half Nelson holds you down, pin you, cradle you. Doesn't matter what it is. I'm sure either one of these men would be more than happy to give you a lesson in the art of professional wrestling. Well, think I do is give me a date. Well, first, um, off, first off, let me tell you something, my friend, because I, you know, I understand you're an amateur man. I've been in a half Nelson before. I've been in many amateur wrestling holes, but I gotta ask you, have you ever been clobbered with a chair? Have you ever been clobbered with a trash can? Have you ever been thrown into a cement wall? I really gotta wonder that if you understand me. Mm, sound, the way you're talking, it's like you've been thrown to a couple cement walls too many times. Well, what, when, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If it is so fake, then why would he be getting thrown into the cement walls? He ain't really getting thrown into a cement wall. Well, then man. why are you saying it sounds like he got thrown into a cement wall? I don't know what's wrong with his voice. I'm just saying. You said he got thrown into too many cement walls. But then on the other hand, you try to say it's fake. If it's fake, how did he get thrown into the cement walls? Oh, God. You know what, tell me, you tell me this, okay? I think, I think the way this guy's talking, he's got his uh, amateur headgear on a little too tight. My amateur headgear on too tight? I don't think you, you don't want to, you want to be wearing no headgear. Yeah, you, I, mean, I don't need no headgear. I'm a professional. Professional you know, headgear. Uh, y'all professionals. Professional right, boxer, professional. professional or amateur boxer. What? Okay, compare. It. Can I ask you a question? Same What's concept? the mask for? I mean, you know, are you ashamed of yourself? Well, I assume that question is directed at Brother Midnight, but let me tell you something. The mask isn't for a very good reason, and I'll tell you the story if you like. If you got a few moments. I guess I do. Well, okay, because when Brother Midnight first began his wrestling career, he was not under a mask. No, no, no. But there were too many women flocking at Brother Midnight because he's ever so pretty, ever so pretty. But you see, the more the concrete man that I am, I cannot be indulging in that type of activity. So I decided to to don the face covering in order to have a little bit more peace in my life because the women flocking, and let's be frank, the fruits of the female are sometimes ever so tempting, even to a man like myself who has concrete morals. And you see, I just felt that it would be better for my crusade and spreading the good word, baby, if I didn't have to be harassed and bothered by these ever so pretty ladies that I, you know, I do understand, I do appreciate the pretty ladies that come to the show and hang out after, if you understand what I'm saying. But you see, Brother Midnight just can't be bothered because I'm here for a crusade. I'm here to spread the good word, if you understand what I'm saying. And I hope I understand, and I hope that you have, have been answered fully to that question, if you understand me, baby. Well, look, the reason I called, I ain't trying to knock grass on the nut. I really appreciate it a lot. It's a good sport. It's a really hard, challenging sport to see. It's just... I'm not really trying to knock y'all off or nothing. It's just all the time when I see WWF, stuff like that, you know, I mean, Ric Flair, things like that, and, you know. Well, you got to take into consideration the high-tech equipment that they've got. They have got these big ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 cameras that can make everything so so clear, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It makes it look so much different. Now, we're what what's a lot of people call outlaw organizations, you know what I'm saying? Because we get out here, we run independent shows, we, we'll run high school gyms, we'll run National Guard armories, we'll run community centers. We don't have to be in these gigantic uh, television studios or these gigantic 
Coliseums. So it's a little crude at times, but it's the same sport. Never underestimate the people on this level. We're just as good as anyone in the WWF, anyone in the WCW. They just get more publicity. That's the only difference. Very well put. Thank you. Well, thanks for y'all's time. All right, thanks for calling. Fine, gentlemen. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, Rick. Hey. How y'all this morning? Hanging in there, man, wide open. You got a question? Uh-huh. Whatever happened to Johnny Weaver? I seen Johnny Weaver two weeks ago in Charlotte, North Carolina at a Smoky Mountain Wrestling show. He's retired. He's kicked back to the house, hanging out around the pool. He's, his time is done, and he knows it. All right, that's all he does. All right, thanks for calling in. Hello, you're on the air. The Dynamo from Ohio. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Sebastian Kane is a punk. I think he was on here just a few minutes ago. Huh? He was on here a few minutes ago. No, I couldn't get through. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, he's still in the studio. If you want to talk to him face to face, I'll have him come right here and stand. Oh, yes, please. Come here, Sebastian. This guy's got something to say to you. You guys don't mind, do you? Oh, no, no sir, feel he's free. He's a fine man. He's going to come right over here so you can tell him what you got to tell him to his face. All right. I'm going to hold the mic up for him right here. Well, this is the guy that fell in the creek. It's, he only travels the creek. It's down from Ohio. I'll sit on the floor. My seat, yeah. Right. You all right, there? Yeah, hey, I'm fine. I'm all right, brother. Bastion. That's me. I'm going to give you a spinning back. Boy. Come on. I'll give you the moonsault. The moonsault. Oh, the man, moonsault. I might be smashed with all might that. Might even give you some sun pepper. Might even. Hmm, what if I come up there and take you down, boy? Well, come up. You know what? You're a punk, and I, I heard you talking about Lex Luger a couple weeks ago. A Luger's real man. Nothing. Luger's weak. He couldn't even take out one guy. What was his name from Well Done? He could impress him over his head. They dropped him before he even got him up. <laughs> Sad, man. Slammed Yakazuna. He's a powerful man. It's like he would slam you with ease. Right, right. He slammed a few sandwiches. You can tell that. But I'll tell you what, Sebastian. One, when, when I come into the AIWF, I'm gonna get a match. But when I give you my spinning back kick, I'll try not to take your head completely off. Okay, all right. All right, we'll keep that in mind. All right, see y'all. All right. I'm going to go back over here to the buffet. Huh? Okay, yeah, nice to have that, buddy. <laughs> Hello, you're on the air. Hey, Diesel. Yeah. Iceman, one more time. Uh-huh. That guy that called in was knocking wrestling a couple of calls ago. Uh-huh. I know him. Okay. Seems his name should be Sean Nichols. You, Sean, you have been exposed. Mr. Sean Nichols. See, he says that wrestling's fake. Like the Dynamo pointed out a minute ago, Lex Luger slammed Yokozuna. Yes, he did. How? It has to hurt a little bit. I mean, somebody that size hits the ground, don't hurt. That's true. I mean, we're not falling on, you know... Feathers. Yeah, we're not falling on feathers. You know what I'm saying? We're falling on a mat. We're falling on a mat with, with plywood, sometimes big two-by-six boards underneath it. I mean, you know, for the foundation, a lot of rings are made out of steel. Yeah. The ring the AIWF has is made out of steel. South Africa, it's concrete. There you go. And so, was, yes, it does hurt. He was talking all this junk he's kicked butt in the past. He's got his butt kicked by me, for example. Well, there you go, Sean. You have, been, like I said, you have been exposed. Yes. Uh, all right, thanks for the time. I just want to call in and make my point. All right, thank you very much. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, where is that man that was on there a while ago, a few minutes ago? That was Sebastian Kane. Put him back on there. I got to talk to him for a minute. Come here, somebody got something else to say to me. I know you're trying to eat. Get him off the buffet. Come on. Get out of the greens. Let's go. Get out of the greens. <laughs> Come on over here, sit down. Don't worry, man, worry, man. Don't worry, man. Don't Swallow man. your food, swallow your food. What? Lex Luger's not weak, you're weak, you little punk. Luger, Luger's the weakest human in the world, and you hang up your chicken goose. You know, I gotta tell you, that's a little bit ignorant, you know? You, they, they come on, they, they, they make a bold statement like that, and they hang up before the rebuttal, if you understand me. A little bit, a little, little bit ignorant, if you understand what I'm saying. Okay. All right, now, it's time for us to go off there. That's the final word from... Brother Midnight, Brother Midnight, Steve, you got a final word to say? All I got to say is it's going to be the Canadian way when Sassy Steve Stryker gets in the ring with any American who dares. Sebastian, you got anything? I'm going to tell you now. Tonight in King, 
Black Knight, it's you and me for the heavyweight title. I don't want it, but I'll take it. There you go. You've heard Sebastian Kane, Sassy Steve Stryker, Brother Midnight, and I'm Rick Diesel. We'll see you next week on AIWF Ringside Wrestling.